everybody, this is Jerry Dean from Missing Persons of America. We're going to go over cases that you probably have heard a lot about. All the missing men that are found in bodies of water over the U.S. I've been thinking about that for a while and have gone over and did a lot of research and wanted to share it with you. So stay tuned. I'll be right back. Again, another young man has been found deceased in a nearby lake. It has begun such a common occurrence that when I hear that a young man was last seen at a bar, I know that in about a week they will find him in a nearby lake or river. Martin Gutierrez is the latest case here in my area. Martin was with a group of friends in downtown Austin. He was in a very busy area that is frequented by young professionals. He walks off while talking on the phone and goes missing. The family, friends, and authorities search and search and Martin's phone went dead shortly after his last phone call. And other than the video that shows him leaving a bar, there is no clues where he is. His body was found in Lady Bird Lake a week later. Martin had no history of depression, was only seen having one drink, but for some inexplicable reason, <laughs> he ends up drowned in a lake about a 30 minute walk from the bar. Why? So I started talking to my husband, Mark, and, and we began theorizing on this subject, and he brought up a point. When you and I were young, you know, what the drugs were out there. You had meth, cocaine, marijuana, whatever you did it, you knew what to expect. But now there are all kinds of new designer drugs that you don't know what it might do to you. I thought about bath salts and how some people would get a reaction where they would go into a trance and attack and bite people, leading them to acting like they were cast members from The Walking Dead. <laughs> Instead of getting wired up or calmed down but because of the manufacturing or the chemical makeup of the person taking the drug, they react in such a bizarre way that it made national news. More and more cases were happening and either it was the way that the drug was made or the way it reacting with some people that turned them into monsters. But is there a drug that can cause men, and it seems to just be men, to walk to the nearest lake and jump in and let themselves drown? Elias has a blog, Boston's Mysterious Vanishings, where she outlines the subject of men who disappear and are found deceased in the water. So, so far, this is 13 men that Elias has done research on. That's a lot. But it averages out to about one a year found in the water. And from working on missing person cases for so many years, I know that Boston is not the only place where this is occurring. I see reports all over the U.S. and it goes hand in hand with the reports that the person was last seen in a bar. It's all over the U.S. but not specific to what area like Boston's mysterious vanishing is researching. The United Kingdom is also aware that many of their young men are found in water. According to their research in 2010, 12 men went missing on a night out who were found dead in water. All these people were seen leaving a bar. There is no hard statistics being taken on this, and in fact, it's a really difficult thing to track. For example, there is no record of how many men are perishing each year in the water, let alone the reason why. I mean, like alcohol, drugs, or sober. It's just like depression. It's just like there is no record of how many men go out and drink at a bar and make it home safely. There's no research done on that. 
If doing the research showed that one or two men perished in water after a night out on the town out of a thousand men that made it home safely, then the risk is pretty low. In other words, going to a bar will not increase your chances of ending up in the water later. But if it's four to five men per a thousand, then the risk is high. Even if we were to generalize it even more and said four to five men are found deceased in water per a thousand men that went out for the night and returned safely, is that number still high? How many people do actually perish each night in a city? Well, looking at a quarter's report in Austin, Texas, it shows that an average of one to two people die each day. One case that always comes up when this topic is mentioned is the smiley face killer. You know, the name comes from the symbol that was found near where the drowned victim was found. So Kevin Gannon and Anthony Duarte, two New York detectives, Notice that a number of young men were being found dead in bodies of water across 11 states. They noticed that the men were often leaving parties or bars. And their conclusion is that these men did not accidentally drown, but were victims of a serial killer or killers. What I did realize is that the more you research and try to find answers, the more questions come up. And the biggest question is, we really don't know why these men ended up in the water in the first place. That reason alone is enough of a motivation to delve deeper into the subject. But as I pointed out earlier, the stats would have to be very large for it to prove that there is actually a phenomenon. Well, maybe the city will consider putting up cameras along their city waterways. So the circumstances leading up to why a person goes from dry land into the water will be solved. Cameras on the water's edge would certainly help solve a lot of these mysteries and would at least help search and rescue know where to look for somebody. To take it a step farther, if the cameras were live, it could even save somebody's life. So if you want to know more about the subject, just go to Missing Persons of America. And there's several Facebook pages out there on the Smiley Face Killer that you can uh, join and watch and see what's going on there. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.